All right, welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at uh, one opening strategy for Banished. This one I call a, a trading post gambit because we go for an early trading post with very little food. Um, it can go very well. If it, if it goes well, you never have to build quarries, which saves you a lot of hassles later on. Uh, if it doesn't go well, then you're going to have to work very quickly to make sure you have food for the third and fourth year. All settings are on default. Right now I'm just looking around for a place to uh, to make sure the seed is one I can use, where I can actually put hunting grounds. Just putting the trading post down first, uh, right there, very central. A bridge across there, over on the right hand side, that's where we'll put our, uh, our hunting uh, cabins. We'll see if we can get two here. About there and there, probably. So I'll put this one down here. It's not perfect. We'll have to clear some stones and stuff. Okay, now let's just check, see if we can make sure they're not overlapping too much. What I'll do, I'll click on this one, just drag that, and then you can still see that yellow circle. Uh, that helps a bit putting them down. Okay, neither of those is entirely ideally positioned, but it's reasonable. It's pretty good. Oh, let me just open up all my little uh, windows here. Professions. Um, we'll start off with four builders. Although at this point, we could throw them all on building, but um, that's enough for, for the moment. Event log map, okay. Now we want the uh, we want the trading post built as soon as possible because it'll take one year uh, before the first boat comes. And, you know, the longer we're waiting for the first boat, the longer we have to wait for food or stone or whatever we need. In the meantime, we'll just gather all the resources we need from around here. Now we need 80 stone for the trading post and 12 stone for the bridge. Those are the two things they're going to try to build first. I'm going to get them to build the bridge because all that stone is just across the river. Um, so that'll make it easier to gather the stone right now. Okay, we're going to be doing a lot of prioritizing now. Uh, in my first uh, how to play video we didn't do much uh, prioritizing because that's kind of a, a more advanced micromanaging skill uh, and that'll, oh, that'll keep you pretty busy uh, figuring all that out. So right now that bridge is built, just finish these roads and let's get them harvesting that stone over there. Uh, we want that hunting, uh, where is it, there, okay, we want a road there as well so we can get that going as soon as possible. And after we've got that, we'll try and get uh, the house built. So we've got no hobos living all over the place. Let's ha check our stockpile now. Uh, 17 wood, 0 stone, 3 iron. Looks like for this we need stone. We need another 30 stone. So what I'm going to do is start them collecting the stone here. There's a heap of stone there and tell them to do it now. This is increasing the priority, so that's what they'll do first. Even though there's other jobs to collect uh, trees and iron and so on, the stone is the thing that's bottlenecking us right now. Okay, so the stone should come in pretty quick uh, and then this will start building. It's spring. If we're lucky, we'll have it up before summer. Okay, 100 wood, 45 stone. So we'll need extra wood before we can finish that. Okay, you can see some of the, the builders over there. They're actually finishing the road to the hunting uh, uh, hunter's hut. Now that we've got the stone coming in, we should have the stone coming in. Any minute now. 54 stone, come on guys, carry that stone. Yep, there we go. The stone's coming in. That's going to go straight to the trading post there. And we only need 30 stone, we've got 20 there, and there'll be people carrying it back. We've got enough stone now uh, for them to start building that. So we want this hunting cabin up next. 34 logs, 12 stone. Uh, we'll have enough stone, we've got enough wood as well. So it's just a matter of setting the priority on that. 
100 wood, 45 stone for the boarding house, but really want, we want the food to come in first. Once they've started building this trading post, early summer, mm, we might not have it up until until summer or late summer. A bit later than I'd like, but uh, nonetheless, um, building that bridge at the start slowed us down just a little bit. You won't always have to do that, uh, but this plan should be able to cope even uh, despite that. Okay. Now what I just did, um, now they're going to clear the hunting cabin uh, space and start carting the stuff there. So as soon as these guys have finished building the trading post, they should head straight up to the hunting cabin and finish that for us. We want the, uh, the boarding house up before winter so that our people don't die of starvation. I'm using a boarding house this time instead of uh, houses. Uh, the next step, once everything is settled, is to build houses because the boarding house is really no way to live. Okay. Oh, let me put a worker on in the trading post. Oops. Okay. I'm just putting one on and he'll just be working as a laborer basically because there's no one to trade with at the moment and I'm not telling him to bring anything in there. You can use the trading post as extra storage. So uh, you can actually sub keep a whole heap of firewood uh, or even food there and then when your storage, uh, when your barn is full, uh, you have extra room for it. And when your barn gets empty, you can just decrease the amount at the trading post and they'll bring it straight back there. Okay, now the reason I've gone with hunting cabins for food this time uh, is because hunting cabins will give us enough food to survive through the next year and they'll give us leather. Uh, after the hunting cabins and the boarding house, we'll be building a tailor and a woodcutter, and we'll be basically chopping down all the trees around here uh, and making hide coats, and we'll be using firewood and coats for trading. Coats are, are very good. I think with coats they trade for 15 each, and firewood trades for 4 each. Okay. Right now our uh, tailor probably will be a bit too fast for the hunting cabins because there's, uh, they're not ideal yet. They've still got lots of stone and uh, mountains and things in the way. But it should give us enough that we can start trading as soon as we need to. Okay. Um, down to three builders. So at the moment our resource bottleneck is wood, so we're getting lots of wood is perfect. Uh, we're going to need a heap of wood for the boarding house, I think it's a hundred. And we've got a hundred and eighteen stone, uh, so there's no need for them to collect stone at the moment. Oh, one person went down and got that iron, well good on him. Okay, get these hunters going as soon as possible, I'll pump it up to three because we need the food and we need those hides to make the hide coats. <coughs> Increasing the food limit. I always put the food limit as high as it possibly can go. Well, not as high as it possibly can go, but pretty high anyway. All right, so now we need this other hunting cabin running. 34 wood and a few stone. Let's get them on that. It won't take them long to uh, bring the resources over there and get that up. It's early autumn though, so yeah, actually we should get this boarding house up and running first. We need another 50 wood and 45 stone, we've got that easy. Okay, so that's going to be up um, in probably in time for winter. And we've got a few more over there clearing space for the other hunting cabin. Um, our food situation is alright. Um, I'm just going to build a house over here because there's something that happens sometimes when uh, when these people are working far away from the boarding house they'll decide no boarding house is not good enough I'd have to the commute is too long or uh, something like that. Um, so putting that house there might might help us if uh, some of our people decide that no they just don't want to live in a boarding house. There is a problem related to it that we'll see in a minute um, because all the food, probably the boarding house will suck all the food from the barn 
and that little house is going to have trouble getting food uh, and firewood, uh, we'll deal with that uh, if people decide to live in the house first. Okay, boarding house is up. Uh, are these people going to live in the boarding house? Yes. Okay, so we don't need to worry about that house for now. Right, we'll get that hunting cabin up. It's late autumn. There we go. So you see, even though uh, we got a, a message saying our reserve of food is low, the, the food is actually fine. It's just they're keeping it all in the house at the moment. The same with the firewood. There's plenty of firewood, but it's all in the house. All right, here's our first tailor. We'll put him near the barn because that's where he has to walk to get the hide coats and to put them back. And we'll get a woodcutter. Where are you, woodcutter? And the woodcutter needs to be close to the stockpile and close to the boarding house. Uh, just over here. Okay. All right, now they'll finish that hunting cabin first, which is uh, important because we need at least two hunting cabins just to balance the food. Then we'll get the tailor going and the woodcutter, and then we'll get our trading post to go and steal resources from around the place. There we go. And we'll put a few more. Yep, yeah, we've got four laborers. We'll put a few more people on hunting. I'm pretty sure it's going to be worthwhile building a barn just across the river there because then the hunters can bring the food there faster and the people don't have to walk that far uh, to bring food to their house. It'll also help that little house uh, actually get food when the boarding house tries to steal everything. The tailor before the woodcutter um, because we've got lots of wood around here, the woodcutters cut pretty fast. The tailors, you know, they're, uh, they don't produce as much. And we want those hide coats to trade with as soon as we can. Okay, oh yes, low on iron, collect iron, and priority iron. Okay, and that'll d uh, beat our bottleneck. If you find yourself, you're playing this game and it takes them so long to build anything, check the priorities because quite likely there's a bottleneck, you don't have enough stone or iron or wood, and you can make it go much faster if you tell them to get that iron faster. Oh, we just need one more iron. Oh, guys. Yep, they've got, we've got that iron. Okay. Now... Firewood helps you a lot surviving through winter. You need firewood. Um, coats you do need, but there's not quite as, a, as great a need. But because you can produce them and get food at the same time with hunting cabins, um, I think they're very good, very efficient for trade. Okay, oh, it's a cold one. Okay, now I think our trading post was not finished until summer, uh, which means we still have a fair bit of time to get some resources ready before the first trade comes in. There we go. I'm going to start taking hide coats, and because it's spring now, I can also start taking firewood. Uh, <clears throat> I might just wait until this is built, but they don't need firewood to heat their houses right now. So I can start taking it and there'll be enough uh, at the end of the year. Okay, I can always send some back from the trading post uh, to the storage. So I'll, I'll pump that up to a thousand now so that we've got plenty stored there. And as I need, I can reduce that and send it back. Okay, now this is all we need for the trading uh, start. This is uh, not ideal because we have a boarding house, but it's balanced for the time being. Uh, the people are not starving. Uh, it's a bit difficult for growth at this point, but once the boats start coming in, we can really control different things. 
by not having quarries, uh, we save ourselves a lot of problems because quarries have a limited amount of stone and once that's run out, you're left with just a big hole in the ground that you can do nothing with. Not only that, but they kill workers faster than any other job. Every job seems to have a, a way that the worker can die. Um, so for example, hunters might get uh, run over by a boar, uh, gatherers might eat poison berries, um, all sorts of things but quarry I find that people at the quarries die so much and uh, you know it's not a happy end so uh, the really only way to avoid that uh, apart from just gathering stone from all over the map is trading so if we oh that house is going to be built soon okay so now we're going to see um, that house they'll probably be starving uh, when the house first comes up because just because um, these people are eating all, all the food is going straight to the boarding house yep there we go cold and starving let's see yep no food in the storage barn so the hunters are actually walking past this starving house uh, and putting the food in the barn before um, bringing it back uh, before these people in the house are trying to bring it back even though the hunters are the ones living in that house this is the beauty of the game banished that kind of altruistic um, worse than worse than selfish you know they the hunter is the one not getting food but not to worry the storage barn here will fix it and I'm pretty sure because the hunter is bringing the food there he might be smart enough to grab the food straight away and bring it back to his house. Yes, they're, oh, and they're still hungry. We should be able to get by though because the hunters live there. They'll bring the food and not starve. Brilliant. Okay, and once that barn is there, that'll no longer be an issue because the house only stores a small amount of food. Oh, there's our boat. Trading Joe. All right, and let's see what he's got. Now this forest lodge here, hmm. try and serve both hunting cabins there, okay, here we go, uh, now I'll pause the game and have a look at what he's got, bean seeds, okay, so it might be good to start trading, um, order purchase and orders, this is a seed seller so I can only order seeds from him. Now if I build a second and third trading post, I'll actually get different boats coming at the same time and then uh, I won't be limited to just the seeds. Now let's see how much we've got to trade at the moment. Probably not quite enough, yeah, not enough to afford the, the seeds at this time. When he comes back another time, then we can try for different seeds. Different traders will keep coming. So the next step in this uh, is to consolidate our food supply. Um, so that one, if he w was bringing food, I would have bought food off him. But now the next step will be building a little additional food. So perhaps some fishes, um, because the river is right there, close to both barns. And then building more trading posts, so we get more boats coming through. Uh, and after building more trading posts, then it's increasing uh, the firewood production and the production of tradable goods. Eventually we'll get into brewing, which is an even more fun thing. Okay, um, but that's basically how this opening works. So there we go. I'm going to send this firewood back now because people are going to get cold and we have heaps of firewood. Um, so you can try this out for yourself see how it goes it does require a bit more micromanagement because we do have to get those buildings up uh, as fast as possible um, so the key point there is prioritize prioritize get the market up uh, the trading post up and no more quarries okay thanks for watching uh, if you have any questions please feel free to ask I'll, I'll do my best to answer them This is an early attempt to record uh, my my market, uh, my opening trading post gambit, uh, and it didn't go very well at all. So I I got about about up to here. So you can see I've got some uh, the trading post going on. I've got my buildings set out. 
store it, reserve a vine. Okay, so getting the resources, prioritizing resources there. Yeah, let's harvest some trees. But then, then comes the rain. This is maybe four or five minutes into the game. Uh, things are going okay. Oh! Suddenly the game slows down. A tornado has touched down near the town. Okay, so I'm trying to find the tornado now and... Uh, I, four minutes into the game. What can you do there? Um, the strategy, what you should do at this point when you know where the tornado is, I'd say pause it until you find the tornado uh, and then find a point in the opposite uh, corner uh, and prioritize a job over there. Maybe you can get some people away so that they can live. If it's later in the game and you're not so centralized then it's alright but at this point in the game, what can you do? It's just going to come through and destroy, yeah, straight through the middle, destroying everything. I should have reacted faster. I should have straight away uh, gone over to the right hand side of the map, uh, for example, and prioritized as many different things over there. But, no, it's too late. That tornado has us wrecked. Okay, and here we see this is... The tornado doesn't even have to touch them, it just has to be close. So, here we go. Watch, first of all... Oh, I think it's going away. I think I'll be... No, it's coming back. At least it clears the land for me. Oh, it just sucked up half my population. Oh, it's going back to get that one guy that it didn't get before. Yep. One little lady. Run, lady. The lone survivor. Well. Nothing's gonna stop her. She's still gonna chop that tree down. Twelve years old. Oh my goodness. But she's happy. Look, five stars happiness. That's got to be a bit strange, right? Okay, thanks for watching.